What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 15 of The Race here at Kingston Sprints and today we are back and well it's playoffs time. Um, I said last episode I was going to do an end of season commentary of the last game against Houston. Unfortunately just due to an absolutely abysmal run of fixtures as you can see here we find ourselves down in ninth, and as a result we're actually going through the wildcard spots. Now unfortunately going into the last day of the season there was just nothing to play for. It was all very, very sad indeed. So, yeah, here we are. We sit ninth on 50 points. And today we're going to be taking on the Chicago Fire, of course, a team who have perhaps been thrown a bit into the global limelight as of late uh, for the Bastion Feinsteiger signing, which, of course, happened in real life. Uh, fortunately for us, the only player we have to worry about is Helder Costa. I say the only, the, but the best of the players we have to worry about is this guy. Very good player, obviously, Angolan winger. Um, I look at our team and I'm hoping that we can get a good result. You can see, looking at our team, a few injuries here and there, but for the most part, we're in quite a good position. Of course, last episode, we did play in the North American Champions League against Tigres, uh, where we drew 1-1. Just to look at this, as you can see here... We're through, and we're through on goal difference. Yes, we got very, very fortunate indeed. Uh, Tigres, they beat uh, Comunicaciones, but it was by a, a, well, you can see here, only a two-goal margin. A little bit of a surprise that the Guatemalan side were able to put up that kind of fight. But that means that we go through. But um, perhaps in some other interesting kind of stuff going on here, you can see Portland... They were pipped to the post by Portmore United, and if you don't know, Portmore United are actually a Jamaican side, put in the kind of Jamaican Premier League, so a great achievement for the semi-pro side to reach the knockout stages. And also, you can see here another team who have made it through, Jacksonville, a team who play outside of MLS in America, but qualified for the North American Champions League through the um, US Cup. Really great achievement for them to get that far. So there's actually a few teams who I'm hoping we might be able to get in the knockout stages, at least for our opening draw. Um, either of those get to games would be perhaps slightly easier than the likes of kind of Monterrey uh, and Seattle and also Chivas, you know, pretty difficult teams that we don't really want to take on immediately if we can avoid it. But anyway, shifting our focus onto the league, as I said, things not really going to plan. You can see fixture congestion pretty bad towards the end of the season. There was a lot of rotation. Maybe that played into it a little bit. You can see we lost against Chicago, who we played today 2-1. Um, granted, as I said, it, it was a, a vastly rotated side. You can see not really a normal start in 11 by any means. A few, perhaps, key players starting here and there. But, um, yeah, the fitness has been a little bit of a problem because, as you may be noticed going through all these games... We've not really had a break, and even going into this game against Chicago kind of midweek, we've only had four games to prepare since the game against Houston. Anyway, you can see we lost against Vancouver. We also beat Philadelphia 1-0. That was a good little result there, Daniel Johnson getting the goal. And while that Houston game to end the season, we were... Uh, what is it the kids say? Murked? We were murked. We'll go with it. We were murked by this guy, Eric Torres. He scored four. Um, yeah, he's quite a good player. He used to be really good in football manager. There was a few years... Uh, where you could sign this guy and then you'd get Carlos Sierra from Chivas and you'd have like two absolutely incredible Mexican forwards. And well, this guy, Eric Torres, 25 years old now, doesn't look outstanding. A very good player for MLS, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, he scored four against us. And Corey Bins, he lost his head and he was sent off. So he's not even available for today's game. Not that uh, necessarily the 18-year-old would be starting for us today anyway. But anyway, looking at the team as a whole, um, we are in a fortuitous position, I guess, where for the most part we are... At full strength, I think, he, he says as he now looks through the team. Uh, Ike Parr actually the only miss. He is out injured. Um, he was out with, I'm trying to remember what the injury was now, and I can't remember. It's escaped my mind. Uh, a pulled hamstring. Uh, he's back in kind of training now for kind of, you know, rehab. Uh, to get him back to match fitness and get his condition back up. But unfortunately, just not available for today's game. So it is a big miss for us because he is once more this year up for the kind of player of the year at centre-back in MLS. And, well, he could well win it again because he has had an another great year. But the team that we've got at our disposal is still a very good side and hopefully a side that can beat Chicago today, of course. Um, we met Chicago... Well, not we didn't meet Chicago fan, but we played last year in the... Um, kind of wild card game this match that we're playing today and we did quite well worth noting that with this wild card match if you don't know it's just one leg whoever wins um goes through it's a winner take all affair in terms of our team it's gonna be andre Blake in goal the jamaican national team goalkeeper a very good player for us he has not been outstanding i don't feel like a goalkeeper's ever, ever really outstanding in football manager unfortunately but he has been very solid for us Looking across the back four, uh, of course, Kamal Lawrence at left back. 
Uh, right back, we're going to go with O'Neill Fisher. No real changes there. Due to the Icapara injury, it does open up a slot for Jermaine Taylor to come in. A player whose contract is expiring at the end of the year. He's 33 years old. Probably not going to look to renew it, if I'm being honest. So uh, perhaps his last ever game here, of course, I'm hoping that we do win and that isn't the case. Um, so we'll have to see how we get on. We then have Fabian McCarthy, who's left-footed. So maybe I should swap these two guys around. Let's do that. Um, uh, but yeah, McCarthy, very good player for us this year. A player who, of course, we signed last year. And I kind of signed him thinking he was just going to be a good backup for us. But you can see, looking at his average ratings, he's been absolutely fantastic for us. A 7.19 average rating in the league. And just a very, very good defender. Not particularly technically gifted, but he's got some nice, well-rounded mentals. Obviously, 20 determination is fantastic. Well-rounded physicals. And, uh, well, he's really just found a spot for himself in the team. Anyway, looking across the midfield, this is where I might change a few things, actually. I think we're going to go with Jermaine Anderson uh, in the deep-line playmaker role. Of course, the youngster, club captain, a player who is uh, now an international as well for Jamaica, really has had a great year this year. Um, you can see in everything but, actually, the league. You know, he played very, very well in the North American Champions League, very well in the Caribbean Championship. Maybe, maybe he can step up to the plate today and give us a, a performance that a captain would be proud of in a, such a massive game. Anyway, at centre mid on attack, we're going to go with Daniel Johnson, a player who, compared to last year, perhaps hasn't contributed quite as much when it comes to goals. You can see he has played slightly less games, of course, with us having more fixtures to play. Um, he's been rotated a little bit more, but his actual average ratings this year are better. Um, perhaps a sign that, you know, despite not scoring quite as many as a centre mid, you know, he's playing a much more integral role, I guess, in creating opportunities rather than kind of converting them. Anyway, this is where I'm a bit kind of torn. I'm wondering if I want to play Kevin Hunt or not, because I love Kevin Hunt, and he is a pretty good box-to-box -box midfielder, but he's a 19-year-old, and I just wonder if that inexperience could be problematic. I think I'm going to persist with him. He's got that great stamina to play box-to-box -box midfielder. Obviously, very good defensively with that good tackling, but his technique's good too. Uh, obviously, good bravery, good determination. He's going to work hard. I'm hoping he can put in a terrier-like, uh, I guess, performance in the centre and really win us the ball back. But a 19, a player who has improved a hell of a lot, and I don't know if I talked about it, but he has a recently signed a new contract at the club. A few new players have done that. Anyway, the next player we have is Honda. Um, I'll be completely honest with you. I have been looking to potentially sell this guy at the end of the year. Of course, we've got Charlie Austin coming in as a designated player. And I feel like Honda here, he's been okay for us, but he's not really been the kind of standout player that you expect him to be. And he had such a great start to the season. And really, in the last 20 games, he hasn't chipped in with all that many goals or assists. But maybe today is his time to shine. Anyway, in the striker positions, we're going to go with Julian Green and Andre Clennon. Uh, as I said, you know, Apare is missing. But with the exception of him, this is very much what I consider to be our strongest eleven. And we've got some good options on the bench as well. We've got Damian Lowe, who, of course, came in um, recently just as a temporary option. We also have Curlew here, a player we signed at the start of the year. Hasn't played a lot. Wants to leave. Probably will leave at the end of the year. But he's a very good, versatile player to have that if, if we do need to call upon kind of a player late late on he's the kind of player we can bring on just to see out a game anyway we have Fernando Gomez here very good player perhaps not played as much as he should uh, really he's a good player he's earning quite a bit of money so I might have to reevaluate his position in the side but he's a good player and uh, as uh, he is a good player as is this guy Yasser Kasim the uh, Iraqi international he's very happy still he's clearly delighted with a wild card spot and the fact he's on the bench isn't a problem to him but at 27 years old just such a talented centre midfielder not on lots of wages either for his ability and uh, he's the ideal kind of centre mid option particularly with us playing three centre midfielders which with kind of such diverse roles he's kind of a player who can play any of these roles fairly well which is good to see anyway a few more players we've got Ricardo Morris perhaps an attacking midfielder option the Jamaican and uh, we of course have Craig Falley and alongside him on the bench we have Alan Otty as our options so let's see how we get on today a big game you can see here Columbus their banks have impact they are going home their end season is over of course this could be the last game of the season if we lose I'm hoping that's not going to be the case but we'll have to see how we get on here it is worth noting we are still in the JFF Championship Cup which is essentially the Jamaican FA Cup it's a competition we didn't actually win last year you, you may remember why I lost it if you don't I think there was a goalkeeper injury and two sendings off or something stupid I'm still, I'm still salty about that, but we are still in that competition. Um, but given kind of the nature of a lot of the games I've played in that, I'm not going to live come that com uh, competition just because it's not particularly exciting. And I've just realised they've got Robson Carnu on the pitch. Now, not everyone will know this, but a few years ago in Football Manager, I don't think it was even on YouTube, Robson Carnu 
he scored a late goal, I think it was in the championship, to make me, make me uh, miss out on automatic promotion, and then I failed to actually get promoted that season. So, in football manager terms, he could be my kryptonite, the number nine there. I'm a little bit nervy now I've seen the Welshman, and well, he's played the ball to Cam, and well, a Cam prob- probably should have done better. Probably. I say he definitely should have done better. It was a, a speculative long shot, I think would be the best way to describe that effort. But really, that's all the opportunities that have happened so far in this game. With 37 minutes gone, held a cost an hour with the ball, whipped in. McCarthy deals with it. Only as far as Robson Carney, he should have done better there. He hasn't done better. It was a clear-cut chance. And, uh, well, Chicago Fire really had a great opportunity there to try and take the lead in this game. And, well, for being honest, this match has not really been a classic for a game that has, you know, a season's worth of work kind of on the line. You know, if we lose this now, everything we've done this season is worth nothing. Let's see how we get on. Kevin Hunt, the 19-year-old. Building up play nicely. Let's not dilly-dally around with it at the back too much. McCarthy knows what's up. He punts it up. O'Neill Fisher wins it. Now with Honda. Clennon. I mean, we've got a pacey option in Julian Green there. Runners on ahead. Daniel Johnson hits it. I mean, he scores some bangers in his time. And for a second, I thought on that left peg of his, he was going to rifle it home. But unfortunately, it goes over the crossbar and it nil-nil. A half time. I have to tell the players I'm not happy. Looking at the average ratings, defensively we've been okay. Jermaine Anderson, not having the greatest of games. I might switch him with Kevin Hunt and uh, bring on Yasser Kasim, actually. Um, you might be wondering, why don't you want to take off Jermaine Anderson? The, tr- the reason is that Jermaine Anderson is just our captain. He's such an important player as a leader on the pitch. And actually, Kasim could come in and be a very good kind of defensive um, deep line playmaker. And that gives Jermaine Anderson the ability then to play the box to box midfielder role, which if we just look at him. Uh, he's very well suited to this role. So we're going to give him a chance here uh, in the second half. It's unfortunate, I guess, for Kevin Hunt, the youngster, that he is going to be making way. But he's a player who, um, he's okay, but he's not an incredible kind of deep-line playmaker by any means. Not That's not to say he never will be. I think he will be in a few years' time, Kevin Hunt. I think he could be a great player to pull the strings from deep. But right now, you know, I want to trust some experience. And, well, I'm hoping we can get straight, something straight from kickoff. Unfortunately, the ball... Hoofed clear, and that's probably going to be the end of that. Although Chicago Fire now with the ball. Let's not concede immediately if we can avoid it. A cam. Bringing the ball forward. I saw one of his efforts earlier. It was poor. This time, it forced Andre Blake into a great save. The keeper has made a fantastic stop there to tip it over the crossbar. And, well, end-to-end stuff to start the second half. I'm hoping it's not going to main, kind of keep going like this. I'm hoping that we can kind of seize this game a little bit more. And, well, <sighs> Kamal Lawrence giving away a free kick and a bit of a... An uncomfortable position. Grossman going to have the option maybe to try and make something happen here. Only one man in the ball wall. That is bold. Ball whipped in. McCarthy heads it clear. But only as far as Robson Carnu. And, uh, well, he's dispossessed and the ball is cleared. And, actually, I think it's a throw in for us. So, we live to fight another day. You can see, looking at the stats, efforts and chances have been pretty close. But, um, despite our kind of sl- slightly better possession, more half chances Chicago's way. And, uh, well, Kasim, the sub, with the free kick, oh my gosh, he's just scored an absolute banger. He has scored, and that's another reason to bring him on as well, is the set pieces. But I didn't really think he'd score a set piece, but that is insane. The Iraqi player, he was on the bench. I have to apologise, I should pick him more. Imagine how much happier he'd be. He's already well happy in his picture. He'd be even happier, but, well, 66 minutes gone... I'm in a little bit of disbelief. I feel like I should be reacting way more to this goal, given the drama, given the kind of situation this goal's coming. But I'm just nervous now. We've got 24 minutes left to hold on, and you'd have to say we've not really been that great today. But, well, Yasser Kasim, it's a long range tree kick. It's probably, what, 25, 30 yards out? Bang. Hit with power. No bend on it. Into that top corner. Keeper tried to get across. Couldn't. It was hit with too much, for- much ferocity. And, um... Part of me now is thinking, let's just let's just slow down the play a little bit. You know, we don't need to close down quite so much. We don't need to look for the overlap. We can just hit them on the counter. You know, we we, we can just be kind of defensive here. We don't need to go on some big kind of attacking spree now for the last 12 minutes. Let's just see out this match. We could make a few subs. Julian Green, he's had a really poor game once more. A player who I probably should criticise more because he is one of our designated players and there are just games that he just goes missing in. And, well, with the Charlie Austin addition, perhaps it won't just be Kaizuki Honda when it comes to our des- designated players who, well, has a, their job on the line. Either way, Chicago Fire, throw in there. It's not going to matter. Full-time whistle is blown. It's 1-0 here. It's not exactly a classic, but Yasser Kasim on off the bench gets the goal for us that makes the difference. And while we do go marching on in the playoffs, 
And, well, it's a little bit of relief, isn't it, really? Let's be honest. Annoyingly, um, because we are still in the JFF Champions Cup, the Jamaican FA Cup, that game actually comes between this wildcard game and our next playoff game. So I am going to just play, uh, as you may kind of expect, a completely rotated side for that match. Anyway, I'm not sure when the draw is going to be made. Oh, it's done on the 4th. Let's skip forward to that. Hopefully it's before the match, because I don't want to have to play that match just to find out who we're going to play here. Ikapara back to fitness. That is a very good news indeed for the 29-year-old. Another player who's coming slowly back to fitness is Decoy Williams. But 32 years old, obviously, had a very, very severe injury this year. If we just look at it, of course, it was... Um, no, you can see here, tendonitis. Is that a thing, tendonitis? It sounds right, doesn't it? It sounds technical. But he was out with four months with that, and I actually removed him from my squad. So when a player gets injured in MLS because of the registration rules, you can put your player on the injury reserves list or the season-ending injury list. I didn't think he'd be fit but like as quick as he has been. So I put him on the season-ending injury list. Now, unfortunately, he's declined a lot anyway. But, um, well, even if I did want to play him now, I wouldn't be able to. Was that Houston? Houston knocked out Seattle. That's a big result. And LA Galaxy scraped through against Sporting Kansas on penalties. Well, I'm glad our game didn't go to penalties. That is all I'm going to say. And you can see, actually, there's been a, a rejigging fixtures. And, well, it's the old it's the old rivals. It's the old rivals we're going to play. Uh, Toronto. Yes. No, I don't really want to play Toronto. But that will be coming your way next episode. Um, you can see both those games on a Sunday. That JFF Champions Cup game has been rearranged as a result it is of lower priority than the MLS fixtures. Um, so yeah, Toronto is our next opposition. They're actually going to be playing us in just four days' time. So I need to well rest all the players who are involved in our game and prepare for next episode. Guys, hopefully you have enjoyed. Next episode going to be a big one. Toronto, of course, the side who knocked us out last year in this competition. I, I want to avenge them. You know, I want some revenge. I want blood on the hands of Toronto for that 4-0 defeat that we suffered at home in the playoffs last year against them. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you guys for that one. If you have enjoyed, as always, leave a like. I will just say apologies for the infrequent uploads of this series as of late. I've been a little bit unwell over the last few weeks. It's been a bit of an issue when it comes to recording because I've not been able to record. If you watched the uh, previous episode, some people pointed out, Jack, you said kind of loads. I, I did. I did, and that was just because I wasn't very well. I wasn't able to concentrate, and when you're ill, yeah, if you do videos, you know this, but if you're ill and you force yourself to do videos, they're just not as good, and rather than put out videos that just have really crap commentary, I'd rather give you guys less frequent videos whilst I'm ill, until I'm better, um, that just kind of, you know, spew out uploads that are just terrible. Anyway, thank you for watching. I do appreciate if you watch to the end. Not everyone does. Hopefully you understand. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys on the next one. It is me, Jack, and I'm out.